The Bandsaw Life is proudly sponsored by Powermatic, Carter Products, and Titebon, the pro's advantage. Oh. Hey everyone, I am here with Barbara Dill in her absolutely fantastic shop. And what we're going to do today is her bandsaw here, as you can see, is in, is in a little need. So we're going to give it an upgrade. What we're going to do is we're going to put on a conversion kit so that she can resaw straight cuts, um, do pretty much anything she wants accurately. We're going to put on the tire because the upper tire has gone on it. And we're also going to put a quick release on it. So we're going to completely disassemble the saw and make it brand new. How's Great. that? Awesome. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Thank Let's you. Let's get started. Thank you. Okay. I'll go. All right. Now we've got the saw unplugged. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is get this blade out of the way. We'll just get this blade out of the way. Oh, that's magic. <laughs> now, it's always easier to work on a saw if you get the table out of the way. So we'll take the two knobs off the bottom here. side of the beast. Now on a delta it's a little different on the lower guides because most lower guides are attached with two bolts that go down into the cast. Well on a delta you've got two slot headed screws here and you have this mechanism that adjusts front to back which really doesn't work very well so we're going to basically mm -hmm. eliminate that. These are adjusted with stops so we just have to loosen that up so that we get that out of the way. And then we'll loosen up the lower unit. Well, we got junk in there, so give it a rest for a second. Let me get this. screwdriver we've got one in the back here and then we've got this one up front sometimes you may have to take these screws out completely just to get that unit to move. It looks like it's froze just a little bit. And Barbara, I'll hand you these so that you can keep those all for future. Hey, look what parts I have, because that's about all they're gonna be worth. Oh, really? We're not gonna Unless, put them back? No, these oh, are okay. not going back on. Okay, gotcha. Once you get those two screws out of the side, right. the lower unit Are is completely gone. Back? Nope, that's all. Okay. Going away. Okay. This is the new Carter unit here, which is your new lower guides. Okay. It comes with a bolt that is already attached inside because otherwise you'd have to take that off to put that bolt in. And then depending on what version you have will depend on what extra bolt that you'll need that Carter also provides. 
Excuse me. This is bothering me. We'll just get that started. Now, is this universal or just for this model? It is for the 14 inch Delta. The only time that you will see anything different is if you got a, um, I believe in 2000, uh, Carter made a deal with them and they came out with a platinum version, which mm. had the Carter guides on it. Mm. So, okay. neither of those are it. So we go to lucky bolt number three, and you can see ah, there are so many different versions of these. It could be, you know, uh, uh, just a simple as a different bolt. So that's why you won't use every bit of the mm -hmm. hardware that it comes with. Um, so don't don't be shocked if you've got extra left over. That always does worry me. Oh, I have an extra screw. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. So, right. just like that, our lower unit is installed. Now, we're going to go ahead and replace this upper unit since we're doing this. We're still going to take this all apart to put the quick release on, but I thought we'd go ahead and get the conversion kit installed, and the top could not be easier. You simply... Loosen that, drop the head off, and you will no longer have to adjust cool blocks. Great. Or steel blocks. Yeah. Or I'm cleaning up for you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. So now this is our new guard assembly. Okay. So we're just going to put this up a little ways on the shaft just to kind of get it out of the way okay. because when you took off the old head the old guard attached right. to the head well now this is uh your new guard assembly guard is, so uh, our guard would attach oh, right to that okay. and then since you have a riser box assembly right. your guard would work in this slot now, you'll notice that it came with three different Allen screws, okay? When I took that unit off, how many Allen screws did I loosen? I think one. Exactly. Yeah. So, the re again, we don't need all three of these. Matter of fact, the only one that we want out of all three of those screws is the one on the right-hand side. And the reason for that, if you leave the one in the back, there's a slot here in the back, and the guide will yeah. cant to that slot. And you don't want that. You only want the one that is on the side, which is what I'm going to leave in here. Okay. So as we loosen this up, now something else I want you to notice. When you get your kit, you'll notice that the cup has an offset hole. So if you put this up on here and the guard or the guide is too far in, all we have to do is turn it 180 degrees and it moves it out. There are so many different adjustments on the Carter systems because we have seen saws, in, even though it may be the same saw, it may be off just slightly. And so you need to be able to adjust or account for that. Hmm. So then we'll just drop that. Now that we've got the cup on there, we can drop that guard right down to the top because what we want to do is make sure that we get as much capacity out of this as possible. If this is up, that just shortens your capacity. Right. Then all we have to do, slide our guide back into place. Yeah. Look at there. Wow. The guides are essentially installed, uh, and now you have 10, 30,000 RPM double sealed bearings. It's gonna work real nice. Wow. <clears throat> All right, now next, we want to change the quick release or put a quick release on this because the only thing that tightens and loosens the blade is this. And, you know, your forearms are looking pretty stout because <laughs> it takes a lot to 
do this, okay? Now all we have to do is move a lever, but I'm going to show you how we do this. First thing that we need to do is to take this wheel off. Hmm. Now with a Delta, they have two bearings, one in the front and one in the back. But you'll also notice in between there's a little bushing. So when you go to put this back on, if you bump it, see how that bushing moved just a little bit? Mm -hmm. It's hard to get it back on. It's because you have to line that bushing back up. So don't think you've messed up your saw. Um, and we'll replace the tire on this when we put the wheel back on, because I'm going to show you a real easy way of installing a tire. So just so that we don't lose that nut, because it is pretty specialized. <laughs> <laughs> Just screw that back on. So, there are four bolts that we're going to want, actually five, that we're going to want to get this head off. One is where your door clip is. <clears throat> Two, we are missing one. And then three is this one down here. Yeah, I don't know how they got lost. Oh, easy replacement. And right. that one is being held in by the rest, so it's not that big of a loss. Yeah. We've got four. Now, this slides right off of here. <laughs> it's got a little build up on it, so we get our guard out of the way. And the last thing we have to take off is this right here. Now, normally these are have a, a hex on them. Mm -hmm. This one's a little bit different. Yeah. So if we can get a pair of pliers, yeah. actually we don't even need it. Okay. We may need it to tighten it back up. There we go. Fingers of steel. Now nah, the head is <laughs> against it, so I was able to use the head against it. Oh, I see it. Can you grab that light as well? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, once you've got that head off, then this slides right up and out. The quick release comes with all the hardware you need to install it, as well as the drill bit to drill the two holes that you're going to need to in the back here. So we take our quick release, drop that right over the yoke just as it sits there, and we'll take our assembly and drop that right back into place and make sure that it lines up with that groove and can raise and lower that. Okay? Yeah. So then uh, we need our cordless drill. All right, so we want to make sure that it's pretty level across there. It does line up with that screw. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to mark just enough to put a mark on there. Line that back up. And we'll mark this one. Now I've got my marks on there. I don't have to hold this and this just to be able to drill. I'll let you hold on to those for a moment. 
I can see my two marks there. And now we've got our two holes for our quick release. So we'll borrow that. Just drop your quick release right back up over that yoke. We just simply put our two tapered bolts into the casting. Put our lock washer on. Sorry. Let me get a... I do have something else if you need it. I think we just got a burr on there. Now when you want to take the tension off, all you have to do is that and that. Gotcha. So now that's ready to go back together. <clears throat> so then we just simply drop this right back into the slot. Stays in there just as pretty as it can be. Now, you'll continue to use this for your fine adjustments right. from large blades to small blades, right. but now this is all you have to do to take the tension off to change a blade or you gotcha. know, uh, go from one to the other. Or if I you just want rest. to take it off in between use. And remember, mm -hmm. um, taking the tension off in between use um, strictly keeps your tires from flattening out. Okay. It doesn't hurt your blade, doesn't hurt your saw, okay. um, it's just creates more vibration when you start it up because the tires are flat and cold. Gotcha. So let it run for a minute or two, the open vibration will go away and you'll get a little smoother finish. All right. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to start putting it back together. So we'll take... Oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> easiest when I put this back on to these two upper bolts. Okay. Now, we've got 
got that on. I'll go ahead and put this back in. And we'll just use our pliers, which I think I laid right behind there, sorry. <clears throat> just to snug that up, just to be sure. Put our door latch and housing bolt back into place. those two bolts behind that wheel done and then since we're tightening up all the bolts let's go ahead put our safety back on let's put that on to where the blade will actually <laughs> go in there Solid. We would want to put that back in if we had it, um, and you may want to just pull this out, take it to a hardware store, match it up, and you that way. But you can see it's not moving anywhere, right. so I think you'll be fine there. Okay. All right, now when we go to put the wheel back on again, you want to make sure that bushing hasn't slipped or moved. And if you want to know what the inside or the outside of the wheel is, always look for the drill marks. The drill marks are what balance the wheel, so those always go to the inside. <laughs> friendly persuasion. Thank goodness I didn't have to get the big persuader out. <laughs> Always make sure that that wheel is spinning free because some of these when you over tighten that nut they're a lock nut so if you over tighten it you'll spin it and it'll stop quickly. Always make sure that it spins free. Okay. All right so now we've put our saw back together. All right, so we want our old tire off. Now we'll just pull that, that out of the way. And you can see that this one was pretty much done. It's so stiff. I mean, you just have hmm. absolutely nothing there. Whereas this is a much softer. Yeah. So it yeah. doesn't stretch, but you can feel the softness of that material. It's, it's, that one's gotten pretty hot. Oh. Now... When you install a tire, everybody thinks, oh, it's easier to take that wheel off and do it. I disagree. Get yourself <clears throat> four of these good old spring clamps. What we want to do, we want to stretch that as far as we can with two of the clamps. Then, we'll take a third and you may only be able to get a couple of inches. It's okay. Take what you can get there. Get you one more bite just, and it gets shorter with every bite. But what it does is it makes it a lot easier to stretch that final wow. piece on there. So once you've got that done, Then all we have to do is work it on from there. Mm. 
You make it look easy. I've been. <laughs> You've done it once. Been or twice. doing this a long time. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So now we've got our tire installed. Now we're basically ready to install a blade. So this is my all-time favorite blade for any of these 14-inch cast iron saws. 3 8 inch Greenwood blade from Carter Products. Now, right there. This blade will not only resaw the full capacity of this, this saw, it will also turn a circle down to two inches. Yeah. So it is a great combination blade. Just a little tension on there. Okay, what we've got here is this is turned all the way in, so that's yep. why it popped off. <clears throat> Sometimes with these little deals here, they're kind of tough to turn. Yeah. And if you just get yourself a little crescent wrench, it makes it a little bit easier to rotate that into place. Now that's what I don't know how. Okay, that's what you told me. You're tightening it now, and then you're just gonna. Let me check. Just because whenever you t put tension on one, always give it a little rotation before you check. Okay. Because all you've really done is flatten out those, and not really kind of distributed the weight or the pressure of that blade. <clears throat> now that feels a little bit more like what I'm looking for. Oh yeah. It's not touching that without a lot of pressure. Exactly. It should you. just, just a good, yeah. you know, and by checking it right there, mm -hmm. it's a consistent distance from the wheel every time. So you're going to mm -hmm. get a consistent feel as to where that tension is. Whereas if you check over here right. with the guides, that restricts it. But depending on where you touch also determines how much <clears throat> pressure or sound you're going to get. Right. So, so. Now we've installed our blade. We've got the deepest part of the gullet in the center of the wheel, just like we're supposed to. Yeah. You always want the deepest part of the gullet in the center so that all that tension and rigidity is on the cutting edge, not in the middle of the blade, giving it a pivot point. <clears throat> is it important to make sure this is clean, taking a brush or something? If it loads up it? so much, um, sometimes I'll just take the edge of a piece of wood and rotate okay. it and scrape right. it. It does not have to be perfectly okay. clean. Okay. So now before we put our table back on, let's adjust those lower guides so that they are set. So we'll just loosen this up. First thing we want to do 
is make sure that the side guides are just behind the deepest part of the gullet. That way you don't take the set out of those teeth. All right. Then next, we're going to get this out of the way. We're gonna adjust that thrust bearing forward as close as we can get without it touching or turning. Mm -hmm. But you can see how little it takes mm -hmm. to make that actually touch or turn. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then since we've got the table off, we're going to adjust those guides so that they're as close as possible without touching the side of that blade. You can see again, just very little movement it takes to touch that bearing. Yeah. Same thing on the outside. Now the cool thing about these Carter guides is you know how you're always adjusting and checking and making sure that everything's adjusted? Yep. Well, there's a reason why they use an Allen wrench to tighten their bearings into place. When we adjust these and get it right and tight, we don't. you should not have to adjust these guides at all until you're ready to adjust them. So they shouldn't roll. They should no. be cl just as close, but not roll. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Yep. Bottom's adjusted. So what you're saying is now, anytime I change a blade, that's going to be all set up. You shouldn't, if you use the same blade, yeah, I do. I have them. Yeah. then you should never have to adjust these guides until you, and always check to make sure one hasn't stalled or gone right. bad. Always, you know, and, and there's a really cool video on this guy's website, I know, uh, Bandsaw Life. Uh, what, what's the guy's name? Alex Snodgrass. <laughs> I, I know him, yeah. <laughs> um, that shows you how to clean and, and uh, care for your bearings. Okay, good. This front one has got the longer bolt, so it can be a bit of a challenge to get back down through there. Oh. Now this one. There we go. Okay. Wow. thing that we're going to do here is adjust the top then we'll level our table okay. and we'll do a test cut. Okay. There we go. Alright now we know that the bottom is adjusted properly mm -hmm. so next we'll take this top Again, we're going to adjust those side guides so that the front edge is just behind the deepest part of the gullet. Yep. Okay. Then we'll bring that thrust bearing up. Oh, okay. Wow. And again, rotate it. Make sure that it's not giving that all that heavy tension. You can see it could come forward just a little bit more. <clears throat> now when I push on this I can see the lower unit and the upper unit roll mm -hmm. when I rotate this neither of them should be turning see that's just a little dust on there is all that is and that's just fine there now next bring that in again just close enough that we don't want it turning constantly. If it touches occasionally, not going to hurt anything. 
Same thing on the outside. Got just a little movement at the top, just a little movement at the bottom. <clears throat> Now, whenever you rotate, don't touch the blade to rotate it. Always use the wheel because when you use your hand, you're pushing one way or the other. Oh, okay. So, just so you, if you want to check stuff. Huh. Now, okay. what we'll do is we'll adjust the guard so that it is where it should be. We'll go ahead and install that guard. <clears throat> it's right behind you, I believe. Yeah. Now, with this particular guard, you should only have to take one of these Allen screws out. The other one will just loosen. You knew it was coming. There you go. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Let's say you want to take tension off. Now you've got all your tension loose, you can but take just... that blade off okay, if you, you wanted want to. to do it then. No. Okay. And then we'll just bring that right back up and to it'll full go tension. Right into that spot. Exactly. And okay. the nice thing about when it's detensioned, sometimes you'll forget that you detension it. Right. With this, it's a little difficult to yeah. because it's all the way up. Okay. See, notice how it won't come out if you just hit it. Yeah. You have to lift up, out, gotcha. and down. Gotcha. Now I can put it up and it will pop back in place. It, sh it will probably, you'll probably have to rotate it when you do that, but that's okay. You got it. Ah, look at that magic. <clears throat> okay, good. I just had to test that. No problem. <clears throat> Okay. All right, now let's uh, let's level it. Do you have a small piece of two by four or something? Now, anytime that you want to make sure that your table is level, get a piece of two by two by six is usually more accurate than a two by four, and obviously you'd want it actually about the length of the table to get this absolutely correct. Let's get some power going here. The length of, is that the length of the table? Uh, about the length of the table, it would be probably, oh. a, you know, to get a perfect accurate. Okay. So, then we just simply make a simple cut, flip the wood over, bring it around back. Now you can see it's close, but not quite there. So, we'll split the difference. Try that one more time. Oh, wow. okay. Now we know the table is level across the whole surface of the table, not just up one side or the oh, other. Oh, cool. that's so cool. Just a simple way of making sure your table is perfectly square. Um, Barbara does not have a set of fast yet. We're going to get her a set, but this is something that you can do. Um, everybody that gets a fast, they, they absolutely love them throughout the shop for all different types of measuring and um, alignment. But if you don't have one of those, get yourself a small little rare earth magnet, put it onto the body of the blade. Then take a steel ruler and stick that to the body of the blade. Now I can see where square is to the blade. And I can line it up square to the body of the blade. Now the fasts are so much more, they're more measuring and uh, adjusting, uh, and they will definitely line your fence and everything up nice and square for you. But in a pinch, oh, cool. this is actually how I designed the fasts. <laughs> I had to figure out how to get square to the blade, and it's difficult to look at 
the edge of the teeth and try to get a nice square. So that's how I basically designed those fasts and they've really been handy. All right, now Barbara has given me a nice piece of holly here. And we're just gonna take a slice off this just to show how well this setup will cut. Take a little bit less, we don't need quite that much. why there's a solid base there so that you don't have to worry about holding on to the piece when it gets through the cut. Right. Boy, doesn't Pretty get good. much prettier than that. Pretty good, yeah. Yes, yeah. Wonderful. <clears throat> Okay, it's a Cadillac now. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got your saw tuned. It's easy to change blades mm -hmm. and it has the ultimate mark on it. That's How right. do you like? Love it, I love it. All right, well, thank you very much for being a great sport <laughs> um, and uh, allowing us access to your beautiful shop. And thank you for all you're, your time. You're welcome here anytime. Thank you. Yep. You Thank saw you. that on camera. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>